everyone. Welcome to another episode of Career Uninterrupted. I'm your host, Lochan Narayanan, founder and CEO of Off Experiences. Today, we have two amazing people with us, Dr. Sindhu Upadhyay and Dr. Satyan Sharma, two eminent mental health care professionals who do extensive work with working parents. At Off Experiences, we work with them extensively for our Working Mom program. A little bit about the two of them. Yeah, you would like so, us to step in here? No, I'll do a quick introduction. Okay. So, um, Dr. Sindhu comes with over 16 years of experience in clinical psychology. Uh, she's been trained by Beck Institute USA on CBT models. She's a certified master therapist from the Council of India and has expertise in cognitive behavioral therapy. She collaborates with different organizations, Untangle.Space, CBT Care, Mind Over Matters, and uh, many other mental health advisors, along with um, uh, Dr. Satyan as part of the health, mental health advisor for the Mohan Foundation. Dr. Satyan is a senior consulting psychiatrist trained by AFMC Pune, specializes in anxiety, depression, OCD, PTSD, and a lot of other assorted mental health disorders. He's responsible for important roles like President for Indian Association for Private Psychiatry, uh, Punjab and Chandigarh, Vice President for Patiala Management Association, Advisory Board Member for Association International de Adjutant and Science, uh, Economic and Commercials. Am I, I hope I'm ISEC, that right. ISEC. Let's yeah. make it just ISEC. The French even I can't pronounce. <laughs> In fact, Lochan, I was just thinking, if it's okay by you, we may need to yeah. redo it because uh, Mindsmith... Sure. Um, Let's make it crisper. Yeah, yeah. Crisper. Okay. Just, sure. So let yeah. me do this then. I will... Uh, let me start this over. I'll just do a very brief two-line introduction of the yeah. two of you and give, hand it over to you. That's just enough. Add it. Is that yeah, okay? yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Don't let's, make let's it do too this. heavy. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Sounds... Just say that so, I had therapy yeah. for Mindsmith. We won that brand. So, yeah. Uh, okay. and oh, uh, Dr. Satyan is the founder and the head psychiatrist for CEO, CEO at Mindsmith. Huh. Okay. Founder Perfect. and CEO. All right. so, yeah. so let me let me start again. Huh. If that's done, okay. right? Um, all right. So, um, hello everyone. Welcome to another episode of Career Uninterrupted. I'm your host, Locha Narayanan, founder and CEO of Off Experiences. Today, we have two amazing people with us, Dr. Sindhu Upadhyay and Dr. Satyan Sharma, two eminent mental health care professionals who do extensive work with working parents. Both of them are associated with an, this amazing organization called Mindsmith. Dr. Satyan is the CEO for Mindsmith and Dr. Sindhu is the head psychiatry for Mindsmith. Head of uh, therapy. Off head therapy for mindset. I'm yeah. sorry. Um, at Off Experiences, we work with them extensively for our working mom program. And I will not do justice if I'm going to introduce them in depth. Uh, so I'm going to do ask them to do a quick introduction of themselves. So Dr. Sindhu and Satin, if you could just maybe share a little bit about your background mm -hmm. and how this whole space of working with parents and women especially came about. So over to both of you. Yes, uh, Lochin, first of all, thank you for inviting us to your studio for this. I am a clinical psychologist and a senior psychotherapist. I, uh, like you mentioned, I had therapy for the Mindsmith, which is a brain uh, science-based pl platform. We, um, we are the possibly one of the rare evidence-based um, mental health organizations. And uh, over the last... Um, 18, 19 years, I've worked extensively with women's mental health, with mood disorders and spectrum of anxiety disorders. And uh, in the last uh, couple of years, I've been closely working with Mindsmith and Dr. Satin and I uh, do a lot of workshops on parenting and uh, especially for expecting mothers, expecting parents, all of that. We aim to remove the barriers from mental health in this country. And over to you, Dr. Satin. Thank you. And yes, uh, thank you, Lochin, for having us here. Yes, I am a psychiatrist with my education and training, and I'm passionate about being helpful generally, right? And 
at MindSmith, which is uh, our platform of which I am both the founder as well as the CEO. What we are trying to do is, as Sindhu very correctly said, we want to lower the barrier to approaching and getting mental health. You know, mental health services mm -hmm. are hugely stigmatized and unnecessarily complicated. We want to simplify it. We want to lead by science. And in fact, this very year, I have I have decided that I'm no longer going to call it mental health anymore. Let's talk about it as brain health. That's Absolutely. it. Another organ. Another organ. Uh, we all acknowledge it's the most important. And at the same time, probably the most neglected one as well, right? Mm -hmm. So we are trying to make it a better word, one brain at a time. <laughs> and uh, we use science, evidence, and the best practices to do that. And we are, we've been associated with off experiences for quite some time now. And it's, it's always been a pleasure to be anywhere which Lochan is organizing. That's we true. look forward to it. <laughs> Thank you so much. And and before I jump into the barrage and multiple sets of questions that I do have, uh, thank you for being here. And uh, with both of you, I would really like to explore today mm -hmm. the dimensions on uh, working parents, uh, their mm -hmm. mental health. How does uh, becoming a parent impact uh, an individual's um, view of themselves? How does uh, how does it impact their career? So we are going to explore this entire space. This season for us is uh, all about talking about women, career and parenthood. So I'm very excited that the two of you agreed to do this uh, podcast and this, uh, this particular episode with us. So I'm going to jump in straight and ask you a bunch of questions, which, uh, you know, which does come up in different conversations, especially mm. from our groups as well. So, um, so I'll start with you, Sindhu. Okay. So um, there has been an increase in the number of women in the workforce, right? right. So, I mean, we would we are probably not there where we would like us to be, mm. but there has been an increase year after year. We see more women coming in. Mm. So is this a good, you know, a welcome reality in specifically for women in terms of their mental health overall? Mm. Is this a good uh, piece that we should be acknowledging or is it... In, or is it causing uh, right. more stress to them? So, so Lochan, what an unfortunate dilemma we are faced with, right? But to answer your question, I want us to imagine this for a moment. Now, imagine there are two excellent deep sea divers who are sent to find the most precious pearl in the vastness of the sea. One man and one woman, a man and a woman. Mm. In abilities and skills, they're not very different. However, there is a 20 pound ankle weight added to the woman. So she tries, she's very good at swimming. She tries, swims, but over a period of time, she's dragged to the bottom of the sea with the weight and perishes. Yeah. Yeah. Now, what is this weight? This weight is of the internalized voice of a superwoman. This weight is of everyone's expectations. This is the weight of years of misogyny and patriarchy. This is the mm. weight of casual sexism, microaggressions, mm. gender bias. This is uh, the voice that heckles at her and tells her that, hey, you can actually just by sheer will and multitasking, you can make some sacrifices and bravo, you're going to be a superwoman. Mm. We can worship you. Yeah. We can put you on yeah. our pedestal. Uh, yeah. Also, Let's balance everything perfectly. Home, work, responsibilities as a woman towards caregiving, um, elder care, raising children, looking perfect, keeping your family healthy and happy. So now you have a woman with drive, interest, abilities, and you might actually even say that, listen, we gave her equal opportunity. Remember, both oh, yeah. of these people were sent to the sea to get that pearl. Correct. Yeah. yeah. But this... Woman is now burnt out, stress, depleted, and suffering in mental health. Now, that's yeah. the paradoxical reality because while I want to rejoice the number of women who are joining the workforce, I would love the pie to be larger, the sky to be massive. Yeah. Reality is 
community-based studies, studies of treatment seekers, they're indicating that women have, on average are two to three times at greater risk to be affected by mental health conditions. Mm. And another very interesting thing, and in, you know, I mean, I, I suppose it's a great thing that Dr. Satin is here with us because he'd understand this, perhaps that gender has nothing to do with being able to handle stress. Both women yeah. and men experience stress at the same level. But the problem really happens in a family setting where a woman has mm -hmm. to look after the children or elders and inevitably look after the kids too. So after a long day at work, the woman has to uh, make sure their academic pursuits are met, cooking, medical needs, everything. So the whole, everything is taken. Yeah, so the whole dictum of the woman being the engine of the house is the reason why women are right now suffering. Because we have mm -hmm. put her at a place where she doesn't know how to deal with it. She didn't want to be there. She wanted mm -hmm. equity. She wanted mm -hmm. to be given a space under the sky, her share mm -hmm. of the deal. But what mm -hmm. do we have? We now have said that go live your life, but hey, also carry all of this along with you because yeah. you can multitask. I mean, look at Indian mythology, how we depict uh, Indian goddesses multiple hands and multiple power. hands ah. yeah. yes but we got to take a moment to understand that women and men the different certain attributes biology biological social emotional needs are different psychological vulnerabilities are very different all of these will mm -hmm. contribute to the numbers so very simply lochin to answer your question the new reality is paradoxical that's where we are at mm -hmm. and we must mm -hmm. look at this as a crisis point. Actually, the crisis point was years back, but well, we are going to get catapulted into an active volcano of mental health crisis yeah. and women would be in at the eye of the storm. Mm. Absolutely. And, Absolutely. And then, mm. It's very interesting that you bring that, right? Because um, I see a lot of women struggling with um, hmm. either spaces. So I recently Ooh. spoke to like a young mother and she was trying to tell me, I said, so I see that, you know, you're doing fairly well at work and you feel, I see some from your posts, etc. you feel very stable. She said, yeah, touch word work is good. Though the pay is not that great, but I'm working with great people, you yeah. know, I, and, uh, you know, I'm at least able to take care of some bit of mm. expense and something. Mm. And I found her justifying uh, her desire to, you know, have maybe a, a, a slightly lighter kind of a workload mm. um, because she is now comparing herself with her her peers who are probably doing fairly well, you know, in mm. their careers or, you know, doing mm. much more in her mm. head, are doing much more. Um, so today women are neither here nor there. So you Absolutely. have to be, you also have to be a career person because mm. if you're not, you're also like, oh, you don't have a career. Oh, you don't do anything. Oh, she doesn't do anything yeah. is the second thing. But at the same mm. time, if you're choosing to be a stay, you know, if you're choosing to have a career, then you're like, oh, yeah, you know, her kids obviously are not well taken care of because she has a career. So, so this constant guilt, and I'm going to ask you, yes. uh, Dr. Satya, in this question, the guilt, right? The, we use women's guilt. We use mom's yeah. guilt. I have not heard dad's guilt. I have not heard no. men's guilt. Um, so what's the, you know, what is this curious, you know, phenomenon of guilt? Why, why are women <clears throat> carrying this guilt a lot more than I would say men uh, in their ecosystem? Let me just share your example, Lochan, which you shared with us the last time around, right? So there was somebody at home who needed medical attention, right? Your husband was able to provide that to the team. Everything was taken care of, whatever happened, the visit happened, the, the required medical intervention was done. The person was well settled at the house and the domestic help was there to take care of whatever regular needs the person had. You were busy that day. You were working. You are a full-time yeah. professional. You are running an enterprise, which is never easy on anybody, right? There are, there are. Your time is not your own. We know that, yeah. right? You'll have demands, and you were working. You were having a regular working day while all of this was happening in the background. 
at the end of your day you come back everything has been taken care of as i said your husband has taken care of it the way any responsible mm-hmm. adult would right and you still felt the need to apologize for being absent that day yeah had it been the other way around the men do not begin with an apology mm-hmm. so listen what happened there is a result of social programming Mm-hmm. expectations the expected role of a woman and who has to unlearn this yeah, first your, is the woman voice. themselves right i mean of course Dr. this Sakin, is sounding again voice. at <laughs> at uh, you know again again seconds. it seems to be defeating the purpose that i'm saying okay ah. you have to do it again but yes uh, consciously mm-hmm. you need to understand that see when we talk about women empowerment we talk about women getting into the workforce there are other things which are happening in the background parents are very happy now teaching their daughters how to drive because she needs to be independent mm. right how many parents are doing the same thing <laughs> with their <laughs> sons when it comes to cooking with the same enthusiasm with the same kind of a independence you know uh, for the boy not very many it's improving i do agree to that but mm-hmm. it needs to improve further whenever a man is in the kitchen he is seen as doing his wife a favor yeah when a woman is in the kitchen of course that's the expected role wo to karna hi hai na right so the thing which needs to change mm-hmm. is this expected gender roles wala equation mm. right with with the new kind of a reality where men and women mm-hmm. are working together it has been unfair to the woman mm-hmm. because her work expectation has doubled while the man's work uh, expectations remain more or less the same whatever he is doing mm, is an extra bonus it's a brownie point to him if he's oh he's changing the kids nappy what a good father right mm. instead of okay he's a parent changing a kids nappy right so as as i was saying right when we talk about the the this entire equation of equality right mm. in the end the idea is that we want more functional independent kids right mm. so where girls are learning to drive boys now need to learn how to cook and it's a it needs to be see chores need to be gender neutral yeah right which includes uh, looking after see nowadays hardly anybody is cooking themselves i mean the kind of demographic mm. we are talking about it just needs supervision a mm. choice to be made ke sabzi kaun si banani hai mm. right and <laughs> and you know kapde dhona is not like you have to take them to washing it's just i mean it's a machine which has to be turned on that's it yeah. right it's not rocket science all men can do that right and so gender neutral household work including parenting hmm 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 i think that that one line if we take it as a goal to move towards it will make for a much fairer a much uh, equal and a much less taxing you know existence for the women hmm hmm yeah and mm-hmm. just like just like there are boys night outs which boys get a free pass for there should be equally you know mm-hmm. the kind of girls night out or whatever in whatever way the woman wants to entertain herself mm-hmm. right so equality in that manner that is yeah. what i'll be gunning for so i i think what uh, dr satin is saying in order to reduce a woman's guilt or whether it's a working woman's guilt or mother's guilt because guilt is such a strong emotion meant to keep us within the lines that's the idea mm, of yeah. shame and guilt these are emotions that help mm. us stay between the lines i'm saying broaden those mm. lines and yeah. to widen and broaden those lines within which all human beings operate women need other people also to let them understand mm. it's okay like that particular example doc was giving about you coming back home and apologizing now because mm. it was you were told that hey nothing to apologize about you know next time 
that you know he can handle it or things can be handled and you don't have to be yeah. omnipresent in all caregiving duties and this is how over a Correct. period of time the impact of guilt can be reduced in women by all of us becoming mm. stakeholders in that change it can't mm. happen mm. overnight it can't happen just like that because these are internalized frameworks for mm. years we have yeah. been worshiped for being the perfect mom for the perfect mm. woman now suddenly we also we realize hey we also have aspirations we are also pretty good mm. at pursuing our goals we kick ass in finance as much as combat yeah. so we are dreaming yeah. we are seeing things come to uh, you know to us now so let's widen the lines within which human beings operate and see where we go from here yeah so it's a very interesting piece that you mentioned sindhu and and you know guilt as an emotion mm. or shame as an emotion mm. is very intrinsic mm. so in this case and i mean it's reasonably intrinsic mm-hmm. right i would like to believe um in this case it's not that anybody else told me why want you there and you should have been there and you should feel bad mm. about the fact that you were not there nobody said a word and it's not that they were mm. giving me the silent treatment nobody yeah. you know bothered about it it was a very self created guilt of saying i should have been there and something mm. like that um and somewhere and now that you brought this mm. up dr satyan i I'm, i'm thinking you know how many times uh, a lot of women who are professionally successful who are i would like to say even in relationships which are reasonably equal relationships etc in an environment which supports them also carry so much of you know shame and guilt on on different accounts and that brings me to the question um sindhu that do men and women differ in their self worth or in their understanding of their own self um i mean yeah. i i do have an experience around that maybe the confidence levels are very different but why is that or is it's actually a very interesting you know, where does it question come from? because it ties into a lot of other factors that impact uh, women and mental health and uh, you know how um, mm. women are now into um, you know integrated into workforce now mm. there've been lots and lots of interesting studies done in the self esteem literature which concern mm. gender differences now they have been system- mm. systematically examined since the 1990s so we are looking at lot of data and these mm. meta analytic studies have provided us robust evidence that a gender gap exists that men tend to mm. have higher self esteem than women this mm. internal mm. sense this is self esteem self worth this internal sense of being good enough and worthy of love and belonging now while anyone can battle with self worth men and women but truth is and this is a hard truth it the truth is that in the indian context historically a girl child faces her first test of approval disapproval acceptance or not belonging before she is even born yeah so we need to understand that that this is not happening uh you know today it's it or or for an adult woman it happens historically from the time the idea of a girl child is uh, conceived and uh, mm. this is exactly what we call reflected appraisal in psychology that while st- still mm. in the womb what are the how how the world around her appraising her presence do they want her mm. what color will she be when she is born oh wait do we want her when she is born what shall we give her will the family be pleased will my mother in law be okay that i've given birth to a daughter instead of a son things like mm. that look we it would be such a disservice if we are only talking about a very small urban population when we understand yeah. mental health when and men and women we got to look at the reality yeah. of india yeah and this is the reality that self worth mm. obviously has impacted women more yeah. now gender roles are embedded in the cultural context sex and mm. gender role socialization they have led men and women to um exploit different sources of self esteem what do these different sources mm-hmm. mean what it means is how do we develop our self esteem and self worth now the sources of self esteem mm-hmm. for men and women are three Le- reflected appraisals mm-hmm. self perceived competence 
and social comparisons mm. okay now mm. we find that women attach greater importance to reflected appraisals than do men and men attach oh, yeah. greater okay. importance to social comparison than women now even when there is or maybe no little difference or maybe no difference in self perceived competence but the difference is in reflected mm. appraisal that affects your self worth mm. and of course then produces guilt and shame so we need to understand that men and women have developed their idea of self their idea of this radical self acceptance or disapproval of self mm. through the cultural context through the conditioning mm. of their lives so men may mm. be driven by social identity and status women may be driven by other people's appraisal of them both may struggle mm. absolutely but differently mm. perhaps that's mm. the mm. point that both struggle but differently and mm. uh, interesting bit of information the word imposter syndrome that we all of us use right now was a term coined by two women scientists who had battled mm. with the idea of not feeling adequate um, you know ever adequate enough never feeling uh, enough mm. wrong yeah. place i'm faking mm. it mm. that's the that's how yeah. deep this runs right so it's it's the internalized voice of the society yeah mm. right that little voice in your head is not your natural voice mm. it's the voice which 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 has come from other people around yeah. you mm. and it's mm. it's so necessary to climb down from that pedestal mm. Mm. right it's it's so necessary to forgive yourself mm. you know mm. that is probably the beginning of you know accepting yourself as a human being with human needs yeah mm yeah mm right yeah, yeah. so so all of us all of us need to you know and it is it is again internalized because society demands it and like mm. very correctly sindhu has identified that this is where women find their self worth mm. and that is what steals the locus of control from mm. them mm Mm. Yeah. Right. So, so you you yeah. need more and more good examples. I find it so fascinating yeah. when you said the word locus of mm. control because very small example. Uh, when I uh, mm. and I may have shared this with you, Satin, that when my husband fixes an IKEA table or an IKEA lamp, his self worth comes mm. from fixing it. You know where mine comes from? Yes. When I look at my boys and I want when when I see them smile and approve. that oh my god yeah. mom is so yes. cool yes. she fixes this together she put things yeah. together my yeah. locus of control is still outside and i am right. an educated yeah. woman with all the <laughs> right. privileges right yeah so can you yeah. imagine how yeah. so this so is? exactly that exactly that you know we need more women comfortable in their skin yes. who are able mm. to say that it's fine yeah <laughs> you know I, I'm good, <laughs> you know. I'm good, <laughs> right? <laughs> so, so, so that that needs to. We just need more, in, and and there will always be early adapters mm. who will become mm. the torch bearers for others to follow. Yeah. Mm. Right. I mean, we will struggle. You know, Sindhu. If if I, if you are asked or I am asked of the top of our head, who do you see as as a woman who's so comfortable in her skin? that she she's aspirational to other women and other women can identify with her will struggle but that's the struggle. point yeah. i feel that it's in our flaws and brokenness and fragments that we need to accept ourselves we don't need to become aspirational we don't need to become a role yeah. model the whole thing about you know and and it's i don't know if i'm digressing but in this country we celebrate when some a girl brings an olympic medal to the country but a, yep. a child who's not got an olympic medal a girl who's not got that is nothing the point is in black and white thinking the point is in mm, order for yeah. my existence to be validated i need to win laurels for you in laurels why you. can't yeah. my existence be adequate why mm, can't yeah. i be imperfect and still be okay why can't i be mm -hmm. enough that is the locus of control i want women to take back 
Hmm. Right. Hmm. right. So one very small experiment started doing is when, and I recognized this need for external validation, when I fixed the lamp and I looked at them and they were busy doing all their other things and I felt really bad and myself for it suffered. In my head, I recognized <laughs> that. And then I said, no, yeah. I don't have to have an audience. I don't need to do, I do it because it gives me joy. It's a very yes. mindful activity to break things and put them back together. Yeah. And so I started it, doing yeah. things for myself. And mm. then patting yourself on the yes, back for it. absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Not looking ex- outwards. Yeah. Mm. So, so there is this, because you're talking about this, uh, recently I started <laughs> doing this. Um, I'd put something together and I'll tell my husband, yeah, it's good, right? It's good, right? And he'd be right. like, uh, can you wait for someone else to compliment? I'm like, I'm not waiting for you. I'm not waiting for you. I said, I'm not asking a question. I'm telling yeah. you that I've actually made something or whatever it is. I said, so, I don't know. I had cooked something. I took a bite and said, it's good, right? And he's looking yes. at me and he's like, you know, can, you, can I compliment? I'm like, I'm not waiting for it. So, um, a little yeah. bit of these pieces and I'm sure... Um, you know, it, of course, there is a cultural, there is a bit of a cultural context, but women across cultures have this <clears throat> talk about the imposter syndrome yes. a lot, mm-hmm. right? Across yes. cultures, uh, even in countries where um, gender reveal parties happen, in countries yes. where yes. it's, you know, they're ex- e- they seem to be equally excited about mm. having a male child mm. or a female mm. child, etc. Mm. Uh, we still see a lot of women having these imposter syndromes, yep. carrying yep. Them, yes. the women guilt, carrying the mom guilt, etc. Right. So, but what happens here, right? In, and I know in India, of course, there is, like you said, right from the time are you wanted question, right, when you're yep. in the womb, to maybe everything else. But it's seen in other places. So, what's happening? across these cultures there is the curious case of a brain that has been gendered by society whether that society happens to be in uh, uh, bareilly or boston that's not okay. the point the point is the society helps that woman form a sense of self appraisal based on the feedback mm. it gives her now mm. The struggles are different in both countries. Like you said, gender reveal pra- mm. as an aside, gender reveal parties are obnoxious, but that's an aside. Um, <laughs> the, the children are celebrated. The birth of a child is celebrated. But is celebrated. interestingly, yes. once you, the parent starts raising the child, the raising of the child is, uh, you know, is uniquely uniform across the world. Like girl child uh-huh. is still given a pink toy. They, even mm. the gender reveal parties. Pink balloons, yeah. blue balloons, yeah. pink part of the cake, oh, the God, blue yeah. part of the cake. Where are yeah. we changing? Mm. Mm. So the point being that uh, it, there has to be larger work put in. Look, I don't believe that we need to split world into 50-50 and men and women need yeah. absolutely equal things. That's a terrible idea. We have very unique mm. needs. We have a different sort of life journey. There is an emotional cost to that mm. journey. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Men have a different, but men also suffer. It's it's mm. the whole nature of living, right? That's mm. a different, but when it comes to uh, women, mental health, uh, self-worth, it is a challenge across the world. It is a challenge for mm. organizations around the world. So even, uh, why do we use uh, companies like Scandinavian companies that are giving 18 months of maternity leave as a golden example? Because it's mm. that unusual so it's not like in the yeah. western world everybody is get, getting their time off and then oh yeah of course they're being trained on how to get back to work and rise again no right mm. so the point is that it is a lopsided um, situation mm. right now we need to do better mm.